Thank you. Okay, Thank that's you. good. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Well, I want to talk today about bureaucracy. Who knows about bureaucracy? Ah, you don't have bureaucracy over here in Korea. I know, I know that. Well, I live in a Latin country, Brazil. And in Brazil, we have a lot of bureaucracy, the bad kind of bureaucracy. You need to go to the notaries all the time. We need to get a stamp on a paper all the time. You need to recognize and certify your signature on a notary all the time in Brazil. That's a huge problem. That's a huge waste of time over there. That's why I launched the, the original Mai on 2015. The, the, uh, firstly on Bitcoin, then Ethereum, then we, we moved it to Ethereum Classic as it was launched, and I will explain how it works. Well, I am a computer scientist, teacher, information security specialist, and I developed some projects with open source for many years. Um, I have a graduation on Harvard Law School on copyright and using blockchain for, for preserving the properties, the ownership of your intellectual properties, very interesting use case. And I am leader of security, privacy, and identity blockchain on ABNT, member of ISO. And I am an administrator of Facebook Brazilian Ethereum Classic community, and they didn't know I have the community for many years. Well, why we use blockchain for identity? One in seven people around the world don't have an identity. And no ID means they have no access to education, they have no access to healthcare, they have no access to political and legal rights. And it's a huge problem around the world. Well, that's the numbers about the industry. Notaries, signatures, digital identity, and KYC, regulatory fraud, AML, and CTF. More than $100 billion. That's a huge market. And for identity, we have many challenges. We have, we have challenges about self-sovereign. We have challenges about recovering identities. We have a lot of challenges. I have a small amount of time. I will pass me a little fast over these slides. And we came to traditional model of assets and identities. Today, to have an asset linked to our identity, we have, we must have an external agent, a trusted external agent, to link our asset, our property, to our identity. And when we move to blockchain, we have a, a, we have a changed model. We have these assets linked directly to our identities. It's a, a, a very game changing around the world because normally the, tr the trust external agents are the notaries or are the banks or, or the government. And we, uh, when we move to this kind of uh, digital identity model, we have no third parties. Well, and I, I will explain a little how it works. The digital, the, digital, um, the digital signature. We have a signing layer where you do a kind of hash of the information you need to sign. You use your, your private key on top of that hash or information to do some kind of cryptography. And then you have a, a, a new digital certificate on, on top of that, the, that data. For verification, you use the public key to, to read the signature, retrieve the hash again, and you can do the hash of the original document or original information. If they match, the information is valid. That, that's the first premise we use, OK? The second is for authentication, the cryptographic challenge. 
and we have some kind of random challenge. Uh, it, it's made on the server side, sent to the client. The client will sign that information with the private key and send back. Uh, the server will start the session and you can get authenticated on many platforms. This model is being used by many, many protocols and by many platforms. And the third part is proof of authorship. When you, we mix the digital signature with the cryptographic challenge. For proof of authorship, we do proof of life when the customer do the onboarding, you recognize who is the customer, you create the identity to that customer and link the identity on blockchain um, to the national ID of the customer. You retrieve the geolock uh, geolo of the user, you do the KYC, you have the apps managing the identity, you can have biometrics, for validating the identity. You have the mobile device. It's the, the most personal thing we have with us today. And at the end, you have a kind of blockchain ID. We issue a blockchain ID at the end of the process after the user is validated. And with the blockchain ID, the user can do many things, like signing documents and contracts, voting, and authenticating on platforms. Well, I am using on my presentation something about the web of trust because we are creating a decentralized network of validators of personal data. On our approach to identity, the user is the owner of the personal data. The personal data stays with the user, not stored on a network, on a database. Okay? And for that, we need to create two, a decentralized network of validators with some kind of reputation on the personal data. Each personal data is, uh, is uh, a lot of attributes of your identity. And if they have um, reputation, you can, you can say, the, the network can say if you can trust or not on the, on the data. And we know the centralized model. We have a uh, certificate authority issuing the identity. When we use the, the web of trust, you don't need the centralized uh, certificate authority. For example, if I need to trust on John, but I don't know who John are. I, I, I know Ken, so I am James, okay? I just I just ask Ken, oh, what do you know about John? Can I trust on him? If Ken is a very trustful guy and they don't lie, I could, because the reputation, trust on John. The web of trust has many, uh, many mechanisms on reputation for improving the trust on the parties. And we came to original my use cases. We use all that I, I said before to, uh, on our platform because we want to do this, trust and powering. And one example of bureaucracy in Brazil. In Brazil, the retired and pensioners need to do a proof of life every year. They need to go physically to, go to the government department to prove they are, they are okay to retrieve the, pens the, the pensioner, okay? And the number of, the population in Brazil is very huge, more than 200 million people. And it, it's, it means 29 million of proof of life per year. If you take two hours on government department, you lose 58 million hours per year. And if your hour costs $2, you lose more than $160 million 
a year. And here in Korea, the minimum salary is about $7.5 per hour. In Brazil, it's just two. How we do that? In 2015, we started just registering digital documents on blockchain. Then some, some lawyers asked me for registering, for certifying uh, web content, because in Brazil we have a huge problem with fake news, injuries, defamation on the internet. And this year we are having elections, presidential elections. Then we created a tool for certifying web, web content. Uh, then some, some people asked us for signing contracts, and you know, we know the challenge for signing contracts is the proof of authorship. We need to do an identity validation. So we created a layer for valid validating the identity of our customers and then registering it using blockchain as a platform for registering the identity. And with the blockchain identity, the blockchain ID we issue at the end of the KYC process, the, our customer can sign documents and they can authenticate on exchanges. We have, we have crypto exchanges in Brazil using our plugin for authenticating without exposing passwords because passwords and usernames are, uh, are the old model for, for authenticating on, on, on platforms. And we know it, we have a lot of vulnerabilities exposing passwords on platforms. And they don't need to fill in forms because they, own, they, uh, they have on their mobile device uh, all their, their personal data. And they deliver their personal data directly to the platform they want to authenticate, ag agreeing with the delivering. So the user don't fill forms, and they, don't, they know exactly when their data are. Well, one old-fashioned way case I explained it before, username and passwords, filling forms, using uh, original my, you don't need to do it anymore. Another use case, you need to go to the notaries all the time. If you need to sign a contract with three, three persons, sometimes you need to go to three different notaries for validating each signature. Don't make sense. And in Brazil, they don't use some kind of digital or electronic signature because they can't prove who are the guy signing the document. And on our approach, we can. This is one example of use case using our engine in Brazil. The Mudamos, uh, they have more than one million signatures using our engine. They won the Google's a social impact challenge in 2016 using our platform for signing public petitions. And in Brazil, if 1% of the population agrees with a public petition or project of law, the Congress must vote. And then, uh, in Brazil, the government already accepts this kind of signature because it's very reliable. Another case, I am, uh, I am announcing today, because the, my, my team told me yesterday, uh, on next month, the Brazilian FinTechs Association will vote for the first time for the board election using our platform, for signing the votes. It's a huge step for us over there. FinTechs voting on blockchain. There is more than 400 FinTechs in Brazil, and they will use our platform for voting powered by Ethereum Classic, because all identity, signatures, and registering, we use Ethereum Classic. And we, we develop a kind of sidechain, a kind of. It's not a full sidechain, because, uh, for example, on Mudamos, we need to register a bunch of signatures all the time. And it could be very expensive. So we, we have a sidechain to receive all the signatures on that case, and then register on Ethereum Classic, sometimes one time a day. And we have the anti-bureaucracy coin. Uh, the anti-bureaucracy coin, I, I, I went to Korea 
two times on the beginning of this year for uh, a road show with, with a friend. And we are on a, with an active bounty program. I am inviting you all to participate on our bounty program with the hashtag hack the notaries. We are launching a platform to aggregate all initiatives around the world to hack the notaries and improve notarial services um, on, uh, around all the world. Just uh, came to our Telegram channel. There, there's more information over there. Well, that's it. We believe uh, blockchain is a transfer, transfer of trust in a trustless world. And then I will open for questions. Thank you. All right, do we have questions for Edelson? Because I have one. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Uh, you mentioned for FinTech in Brazil, the new announcement. What do you think the reasons are they chose you and your platform? It's simple. For voting today, they need to sign all, the, uh, all votes and recognize and get a stamp of the signature on a notary. And we have many states, and each state has a different table of costs. It's a very expensive model, the traditional one. And they didn't change to an electronic one because they couldn't identify who is voting, who is signing the vote. And with our platform, uh, the lawyers uh, allow it, the, the process because they recognize our platform can identify who is the uh, signatory of the vote and, and there's no fraud on the process, on, on our approach. That's why it's cheaper and it's more reliable than the, the traditional model. Okay, uh, what was the previous model? The, the previous model was that they, they use paper. They use paper, okay. And need to go to the notary all the time to get a stamp and recognize the signature on, the, on a notary. Yeah, I could Physically. see blockchain being a lot more reliable there. Yes, obviously. for sure. Without a doubt. Uh, all right, any other questions? Oh, got one over here. Yeah, this is, a, this is a wonderful use case for blockchain tech. I personally never even thought about it, and when you came up, kind of blew me away a little bit. Um, the question that I wanted to ask you is, uh, you know, Brazil's a pretty massive country, but what is your next country that you guys plan to focus on with this type of technology? Easy to, the south of Europe. We, we learn it, bureaucracy with them. We imported all bureaucracy from Portugal and Italy and Spain and Latin countries like us. So we moved the company to Estonia and because the leads from south of, of Europe. We have a partnership on Malta, Italy and Malta for, for doing the KYC of a gambling platform over there. And on Spain, we are trying a, uh, a partnership with a notary over there, too. And on, on, on Portugal, I, I will travel to Portugal because some guy uh, asked me to visit them because they, they have some opportunities to us over there. In Brazil, we have a partnership with one notary. Brazil has more than 15,000 notaries. That's a lot of notaries over there. And we have a partnership with you, just one. All the rest of the notaries were, um, was fighting us a lot for uh, on the last years. And we have the partnership with one. So Brazilians don't need to go to the notary to get a stamp on that document. And they hate us because of that. And we are seeing some partnerships on the south of Europe for doing the same thing hack the notaries, and improve the services around the world. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. All right. Great. Thanks very much, Edelson. Hey, thank you.